Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. The Cubs are picking up first baseman. Kutch returns home. And Nelson Cruz to the Padres. Most importantly, Mickey Rowe from the Rock Country, Florida to LA. Miami to LA? What a journey. Let's talk some baseball. Intro song, intro song. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. My name's Jimmy. We got Jake, Trev, producer BBD. All BBD and Trev back from vacation. Trev, Jake back from Bachelor Weekend. How's everyone doing? BBD, you look super tan. That's nice. Jake, how are you? James, you're also back from the same batch. So, yeah, two vacations, two batches. Uh, as we get into it, capped off talking giants at Mr. Purple, the weird factory as they know it. Noodle just walked in, eating like a horse out of a trough. Uh, if you guys are getting that, uh, you're welcome and welcome back. Um, and excited to talk some shop. Saw a lot of gym this weekend. Saw BBD this morning. And I'm just seeing Trev's. Beautiful face right now off the PJ. Oh, Trev. Uh, yeah, that's me. Yeah. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I am straight off vacation, straight from the airport, right to record, because there are some things we have to talk about. Um, but I wanted to let people know, because a lot of times you hear in, in, you know, out there on social media, baseball's dying, right? all this stuff. I was just down to Cabo and all these kids are playing baseball. All of them were. I met a. All right, James, I like that look. I met a triple-A catcher who just got Rule 5 to the Giants. He's going to be playing for Gabe Kapler. His name's Brian Sable. Met him on the beach, and we played some catch together. I mean, the mm. game is alive and thriving. That doesn't sound like a baseball It made me game. happy. It made me happy to see that, James. That's great. So that's It might his... not be his name. I think that's his name. Please, Lord, let uh, that be his name. God. Oh, my God. That would be brutal if you got his name wrong. David, you check that. Did a Brian Sable recently get Rule 5 to the Giants? Oh I, think I think he did. But there was a lot of tequila flowing on my trip to Cabo. So Blake Sable. Blake oh Sable. You no, know, we're close. Oh, no. Bleep oh, the whole Blake, thing. my guy. Blake. That's a better name for baseball. What you, what you I said a football name. You said Brian. Yeah, Brian. Is that a football player? I don't know. Jake? Oh, he, okay. Brian Sable. It sounds like the guys that used to do the NFL videos. Um, so if that's right, there's some loser stuff on my end. But let's shout out Blake Sable, yeah. your friend. My new friend. Mm -hmm. wow, shout hey. out. Shout out baseball. Okay. Shout out baseball. Shout out Chadwick Trump. Mm. I like him. That's Michael a better Johnson. name. Jake, you want to dive right into Trey Mancini and the Cubs? James, Trevor Davis. Yeah, let's talk some Cubbies. Uh, because as we we came off of them originally, uh, you know, I, I forget if we got any Hosmer. Trev's guy, Hosmer, comes over and you're you're doing okay. You know, second evolution of, of these Cubs. Who's helping out nine-figure Ian Happ this year? Then we get the Trey Mancini move, and that, all right. You know, Trey Mancini went over to, obviously, it was kind of America's darling for a little bit. He, he was the Orioles. He had the cancer scare. He comes back, uh, and then he gets traded to Houston at the deadline last year, and all of us kind of did like the, damn it, Houston, you did it again. You, you guys brought in Dusty Baker, the most likable guy in the world, and then you brought in Trey Mancini, the most likable guy in the world. Uh, he Kind of struggled in Houston, but he comes in, he signs with the Cubs, and man, I, I mean, for MLB proven bats on the Cubs, Trey Mancini pretty high up there on the list, and, I, you know, I, I know we're starting to sneak up on TPP season, not talking Trevor Paul Plouffe, I'm talking team profile and projections, but man, uh, Cubs are trying to shake the tree. I don't know where it's landed them. Obviously, Dansby was their big signing, but um, the Cubs are the Cubs are making a play to become a new iteration and get further separated from 
the Cubs of yesteryear as they've all gone on their different ways. I mean, since since the beginning of last year, they have six new faces via free agency into their starting lineup. According to Fangrass, what we got going on here, you brought in Suzuki at the beginning of last year, and then just this offseason, you get Dansby in there, you get Hosmer, Mancini, Bellinger, you bring in Tucker Barnhart, you bring in Jamison Tyone. I mean, these guys have went out and totally redid their roster. And it's kind of, I don't want to say, it, this is going to come off mean, but I don't want it to be mean. Like, they're kind of bargain shopping. Mm. Right? Like, they're, they're, they're not, they, Dansby obviously was a big contract, but even him, he was priced the, the lowest of any of the four shortstops that were available this offseason. Uh, but he gets the bag. So that's not, they went to Neiman for that, then they went to Nordstrom's Rack for the rest of the people, if you will. And I don't mean that in a negative way, because I love Nordstrom's Rack. Mm. I didn't think he meant it in a negative way at all. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't. It seems like so much effort to still not be competitive, or maybe they are competitive. That's what I'm trying to figure out in my I head. Think they it are. Just seems like uh, just like a hodgepodge of players. It's kind of cool. Um, are they trade hunting with Mancini and Hosmer, like hoping they play into a trade? If they're not into it, but then they they've done a lot this off season. I mean, they locked Swanson up, Dansby for a while. They locked Tyone up for the same. It matches um, Suzuki. They got Bellinger. He seems like a trade hunt. I I don't know what what I don't know how long this Cubs team looks like this Cubs team, and I think it's two seasons max. It's not I mean, it depends long. if it, I mean, if, it well, if it works right. All the contracts are short. Like you're you're absolutely right there. Like Cody Bellinger very clearly wants to do one year and leave. <laughs> so uh, if he does that, Mancini has the opt out. We know Ian Happ, who you know was the Cubs' best player last year, his contract is up this year. I uh we I used to well we reference it on Talking Yanks a lot, and we talk about the GM in the front office. They love a good whiteboard. And, you know, you got your lineup for this year. You got your three-year lineup. You swipe that over. There's your five-year lineup behind that. You're, I mean, the Cubs' three-year lineup, I don't think it looks anything like this. Uh, because, I, I mean, Dansby will be there. Nico Horner, got to talk about a little more, had a really nice year last year. He's a part of their plan, and he, you know, he might be one of the top three players on that team. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of bandages. <laughs> Cody Bellinger's kind of a bandage. Uh, Trey Mancini, Hosmer. Uh, and, you know, at, at the same time, I, I know, you know, Brennan Davis, we talked about him a little bit last year. He's a prospect that might get a call and a look this year. Uh, there's another first baseman who, uh, Matt Mervis, who I, I, you know, can can Hosmer put him under his wing? Can Trey Mancini, can they show him the ropes along the way? And then, you know, Chris Christopher Morell kind of popped out of nowhere last year. It, it felt like for them, he's a really fun ball player. So if you can add a couple more of the young guys, um, I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, Bellinger has straight up potential to be a beast, but we also haven't seen that in a few years now. So yeah, I mean, you're still chasing. You're chasing the cards, and the Brewers have a much better track record recently. I mean, look, this is going to be interesting for them because if these guys do have some turnaround seasons, which obviously they're banking on, because I believe what you're saying is right, James. Like These guys, what they want is for them to go out and have a good first half and then, yes, trade them for prospect capital, whatever it is. But it's going to be interesting to see if like they're close to the top of the division or like in the wild card hunt at that time. Like, What do you do? Like, say Belly goes off and it's a fresh start and he's an all-star again and he looks really good. And then, you know, Mancini looks good and Ian Happ's MVP because that's what he does. He's a stud. Like, I would love to see them in contention and put their front office to the test. Can you keep these guys or are you going to stick with your guns and trade them? Because I would say their window, if you look at, like, where their prospects are at, they're still a couple years away. And that's why you signed Dansby for as long as you did. I think Suzuki is also there for quite some time. Um, I hope they force the hand. You know, when, when yeah. teams do this, I want them to force the hand. That's all. I fear they put themselves in a situation that the Red Sox were in last year where, like, they built a team that's going to be so on the edge of the wild card hunt that paralyzes them and they don't trade anyone that can get them a return. And then you see 
uh, Avaldi and JD Martinez and all these guys leave without ever getting anything in return from them, like the Red Sox did last year. Like it's almost like I thought they were on the you know trade hap, trade everyone, and fit this five year window. But now I think they're going to be like. I don't know if they're in the playoffs, but they're going to be in the hunt to where they might not make any moves, and then they're trapping yourselves, which may be good for baseball. But I, but it's it's just an interesting thing where we're so used to seeing teams swing one or one way or the other, like sure. knowingly. And now we're I'm re with the expanded wild card recalibrating. Like, well, what what is that's that? what I think all the teams are doing. Like, if you could if you could set yourself up and you think you could be a 500 ball club. You're only four or five wins away from a from a spot in the playoffs, essentially. So, like, you, if you can get there and some things go right, then yeah, it can happen. Do you think this team, as currently constructed right now, knowing the division they're in, even though we're playing a more balanced schedule this next year, do you think they're a 500 team right now? Mm. Right around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's Back awesome around. because. Because what were they last year? Let me get the the record up last year. They were 74, 74 and 88. 88. So they were, I mean, that's not too far off from 500 ball right there. They've definitely improved a ton since last year. And let's not forget about our boy Patty Wisdom there. Mm. Hitting bombs, dancing. He's got a great killer smile. I've been I've been buying in the Cubs for quite some time. I don't know if like I'm there to purchase, really? but I'm, I'm watching the price. You I should go get, to DraftKings and officially buy in. I think so. It seems like a no no brainer to me. Draft Tell me how you do that. Yeah. Sports book of MLB. Oh, sun's coming up. He wants to hear the ad really bad. Okay, mm-hmm. here you go to DraftKings Sportsbook. Oh my! Uh, the NFL playoff action continues. We're one step closer to Super Bowl Fifty Seven, and for NFL divisional round, check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just five dollars and get two hundred and free bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Talkin. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL divisional round and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at Drafting Sportsbook with code talk and minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Yes. Uh, the other big move or move, I guess. I feel like Miggy Rose, the bigger one, but we have Kutch chronologically is next. Jake, you want to tee that one off? It's a pirate off season, man. Uh, the boys are bopping. No, I, I mean, this is fun. This was one that it, you'd, you'd see people on Twitter saying, like, you know, the Kutch, who we we got to meet this year at the stadium. That was a funny day, huh? Um, awesome. You know, free agent, MVP year, Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, he's 36 now. And, and by the way, your Pittsburgh Pirates, I obviously came out jo- joking a little bit, but... G-Man Choi happened earlier this offseason. McCutcheon, Carlos Santana, Hedges. Hey, we got MLB guys that have been around uh, and we're working on something. I don't know if we know what it is, uh, but Kutch comes home. And no, I mean, I I don't think there's a deep dive. Like, I I don't think he reaches into something. I I did see uh, a dark guy, Dalton, who said, uh, well, it's it's from the Rob Bertman fell from the athletic said, you know, Neil Walker now part-time calls games how cool would it be neil walker calling mccutcheon's achievements i'd have to ask pirates fans because that didn't move it for me a little bit and i like both those guys uh but maybe that's a little more pirates but hey they're in the mix babe we yeah we put a tweet out or uh instagram post out about Kutch going back to the pirates and he liked it this was earlier in the off season so i don't did we spark this mm. happening there's a there's a possibility that our social media team did i think I talk about this a lot, guys. There's James as the masked man. Um, you got some young guys on that team. Key Brian Hayes, he's your centerpiece for the future. O'Neal Cruz, centerpiece for the future. Brian Reynolds like has played baseball for a million years, but somehow the Pirates still have control over him. I don't understand that. Bringing a guy like Kutch, who you know I know very well, uh, but talk to anybody in the big leagues. He's one of the most professional dudes you're going to meet. As far as work ethic, as far as understanding how to be professional, you want dudes like this around your young guys and they haven't had that who's been in pittsburgh that like is a wily vet that understands stuff the way Kutch does it doesn't happen go pirates go jake i could see you being a a swashbuckler you're muted john 
That's a great transition to Nelson Cruz because that's kind of what the Padres are doing for him. Now, we heard that the Padres really wanted him at the deadline last year because they wanted veteran, or is that two years ago? They were in on him uh, because they wanted veteran presence in the clubhouse and they wanted Cruz. And, And I think they said that. And I think we've been talking about how he should go to the Padres for that reason. I believe we said that earlier in the offseason on the show. And now he's going to the Padres. He's friends with Machado. He's friends with Soto. They have DH spot open with Carpenter. But mostly, I think he's there to teach maybe those guys uh, to nap before games and just kind of chill out. They talked glowingly about Cruz uh, when he was with Minnesota. That's all I heard about was, you know, his routine and, and how he helped guys understand, you know, how to show up to the park and get yourself ready to hit every single night. Um, so, uh, yeah, some of these guys in the Padres, like, are pretty good hitters. Like, I don't know if they, they need that necessarily, uh, but it doesn't have doesn't hurt to have another voice there uh, that can kind of guide them in the right direction. And I think it would be cool to see him and Matt Carpenter kind of, like, switching off that DH role depending on the day. And I think if you're a pitcher, like, you still fear Nelson Cruz. I know the numbers have taken a hit the last couple of years, but – this is a guy that's he's just a hitter, man. Like he's born to be a hitter and he can hit. He's uh he's kind of the king. Like uh, it, we we've talked about it a few times and Jim, you're right, man. It felt like I think going back to trade deadlines and I, I think we were putting it together like, I don't know, Nelson Cruz, San Diego, like it felt like it could be a thing. Here we are now. Um one year, one mil, almost no risk. If he's throwing his arm around any young player, that's a good thing for your franchise. And I mean, you know, I, we haven't talked about Tatis in a while, but think about how much of a story that was. Think about how much of a story that's going to been, going to been, as they say. Yeah. Um. You know, Nelson Cruz, four hundred and fifty nine career home runs. Um. And by the way, like, you know, when you rack up those kind of numbers, you normally have to get started early. Uh. He had quick math. 22 homers heading into his age 28 season. So what Nelson Cruz did for that next decade or so, he's one of the most respected uh, Dominican ball players. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know if he's going to be a platoon with Matt Carpenter and he's kind of going to be their lefty DH guy. I don't know if he's a player coach at this point, Um, but how can you hate it? How can you hate it? Um, Player coach Nelson Cruz. How do the Padres sign everybody? They have signed mm. everybody. They just keep bringing in more players, more players. Do they have enough roster spots for all these freaking players? Yeah, they like they like sneakily lost a ton of guys from last year that haven't returned. It's That's, more than you'd okay. guess. What? That makes uh, sense then. I don't know if I can pull it up, but it was Dr- it was a longer list. I mean, right now it's Drury, Profar, Josh Bell, Will Myers, Jorge Alfaro, Nomar okay. Hazara. Like that's that's a lot of bodies on your roster. Yeah, it was. It's just and and currently, like Matt Carpenter is listed as their left fielder on Fangraphs, and he's not going to be their starting left fielder. So, I guess I wonder who is that going to be? It's not like do they need to get another body? Are they going to bring Profar back eventually, or? Do Padres fans know of a prospect that's getting that spot? Obviously, you guys always know more about your team than, than we do, but Matt Carpenter's not going to be the starting left fielder every day. I, I, I know that. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the roster resource right now on fan graphs, and, and to my surprise, I feel like this, they're a little light with players. <laughs> like The bench <laughs> could probably use some upgrades, so they might keep signing uh, dudes, but they definitely have a squad. We know they're going to be, you know, a really, really good baseball team this year. And I'm excited to see that. I, I mean, I, I can't wait to see Tatis on the field again. Like, I want to see what that's going to look like. I want to see what reception he's going to get. Um, but I think it's going to be negative. And I think Nelson Cruz, guess what? He's also gone through something like this, right? So he's, he's going to be there with Tatis to help mm. him hold his hand through this whole situation because he's seemingly, now depending on who you talk to, because there's a few guys that always reach out to us about posting guys that have been popped for uh, PEDs. He seemingly kind of like kicked that where like people don't even talk about that. And now he's the good guy and, and everyone, you know, wants him around and, and to be a mentor. And I think knowing that, you know, Padres bringing him in for Tatis is a good thing too. And, you know, Profar looks like he could have a spot on that roster. He's still a free agent, but also 
Fangraphs, they currently don't have uh, Tatis listed because he'll be back 420, and he would slot into one of those outfield spots. So that it could be it for the Padres. The way their whole offseason has gone, I'm going to assume no. Um, it, it feels like these guys have had their, their hand in everything. So uh, we'll see what else they got. Are you getting any Roman for Valentine's Day, Jim? We actually used Roman, man. That's uh, okay. I don't Easy, know if I can... Well, we had it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of oh, our yeah, buddies just... might have. What? One of our buddies might have Roman swiped his pinky the other night, just to see how it worked. This yes. was at the bachelor party, and his pinky did last four times longer than the night before. It was pretty wild to see. So if you and want to go get Roman and just have all your men's health needs taken care of, Valentine's Day is coming around, and it'd be a good time to check it out. Talk about your uh, low testosterone and get it up. Get it up. Your, your ability to not last long. Talk Maybe Valentine's it. Day could be like you... You know, some people dip their toe in the pool. Like maybe if you're you've been waiting to get your Roman on, maybe dip the toe for Valentine's Day because they're giving you 20 percent off with code code John boy at row dot co slash John boy. And, you know, spice it up, baby. Get some testosterone flowing. Swipe your wiener. Give it a chance. People are saying dip your toe so you could dip your toe, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. R-O dot C-O slash John Boy to get ready, Roman ready. Uh, go to ro.co slash John Boy today to get 20% off your entire first order. Speaking of Ro, Miggy Ro mm. goes back to the Dodgers where he started his career. Everyone forgets about that. Now, bearing the lead here, the Dodgers traded Jacob... What's his last name? Amaya? Something like that? Amaya, I think. Amaya? Yeah. To the Marlins for Miguel Rojas. So for those keeping track at home, Marlins took one of their few players whose name doesn't start with a J, traded him out of town in exchange <laughs> for a J name, Jacob. These guys are up to something, and I don't like it. I didn't know that, and that's ridiculous because now they might have an infield full of Jays. Mm. Gene, Jazz, and Joey. And let me look before we get to the Miggy Ross aspect of this. And and Jared again, Cooper. And Jared, yeah. Joey Wendell as your starting shortstop. That's what they're listed on Fangraphs as having him. Um and will be trade rumors. The article says he's gonna get the first crack at that. Is he going to end up being your everyday shortstop? I don't know, but it seems like does he fit that bill to you guys? He's a gritty utility infielder type. I can see him at third base. I can see him at second base, but shortstop's a different animal. And you know, it's not like like he. How many games has this dude played at shortstop over the last two or three years? I'm going to go check it out right now. I I mean, for me, I <laughs> I was laughing when you mentioned it before. Cause I'd seen it and I'm like, you know, we, we have a lot of respect for Joey Wendell. Tough as nails. Love Joey. You know, you know what I'm saying? But it feels like you should have Jazz Chisholm play shortstop because he's like the young and up and coming dude. Feels like you should have Gene Segura playing second base because he's been a second baseman. And it feels like you should have Joey Wendell play third because he's been a third baseman. But right now the fish are saying, screw that. Wendell at short. Gene, you go to third. Jazz, you stay at second. I mean, if I'm smelling out what they're doing, Jimmy's had the Jays thing. Uh, 69 games started now. at shortstop in his career. Yeah, he's 20-something 20, 20 games started at the last couple of years each. He's, the, I mean, the, it's, it's tough, The Jay dude. thing, there's 14 position players on the Marlins, and nine of them first names start with Jay. And with all these J's, uh, the smoke that I'm getting from this, mm -hmm. wow. think about who, jo who Joey Wendell is. He's okay. tough. He's Joey Wendell, baseball, believer. They want Jazz Chisholm to rip the job away from Joey Wendell because he should be able to. But 
I don't know. I could see Jazz just being like, nah, second pace is sweet. <laughs> I got a good thing going over here. Um, I don't know. I that that's a little Marlins Jakey fan fiction, but yeah, it feels like you have instead of no guys out of position, it feels like you're playing three guys out of position. Do you think when Justin Turner was available, they were like, dude, we, we just can't. We can't do this, can we? Can we keep getting away with stealing all the J names? I don't know. What's the threshold, James? Do you think you can go all 14? I and mean, then if they do, you know we're in a simulation. Like, oh, Are they locked sure up at outfield like Jerks and Propar's out there? And they mm-hmm. don't have that. They got J.J. Blade, and they got someone in their bullpen whose name starts with J.T. Shagwa. Picked up Johnny Cueto. I mean, Pablo Lopez is out of there. So the the whoever replaces him, it's you know, it's getting it's getting odd. We should talk about this from the Dodger standpoint, the Miggy Rojas standpoint. Um, mm, from smart. all accounts, they're doing <laughs> they're doing Gavin Lux. They're going to give him uh, the job or the chance to win the job for the Dodgers. Uh, but Miggy's a guy that could step in and be a great everyday shortstop for them, especially on the glove side of things. He was really excellent last year, and I think. That's very important to teams to make sure you have solid defensive middle infielders. Um, so we'll see what kind of playing time he gets, where he's going to slot in. Um, I'd like to see him play every day, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to be in the cards, unless he's more of like a utility type and kind of moving all over the place. But he obviously debuted with the Dodgers. He's part of Clayton Kershaw's no-hitter. He had a really good play in that game. Um, so uh, a homecoming for Miggy Rowe. And... You know, it's great. Chris Rose and I will get to see him mm. down Dodger Stadium quite a bit. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Hey, let's not rule out some Dodger voodoo here. And Miggy Rowe could be starting the all-star game at shortstop um, just because that's how it works sometimes. Doesn't this feel like the right situation and the opposite of the Marlins thing I just laid out? Like Gavin Lux had a kind of a breakout year last year, but, you know, they're. They want to hand him the reins to shortstop, but they're also kind of going to make him earn it. And what a better guy to bring in than Miggy Rowe, who is one of the best personalities I've ever seen in baseball. Uh, Obviously a little jam bias, but everything I've seen from him, the dude is incredible. If you needed him to play a buck 20 at shortstop last year, there's no shame in that because he's been doing it and he's willing to play everywhere else. Or he's going to push Gavin Lux the right way. And, and you know, I know there's a lot of guys showing the ropes for the Dodgers, but this feels like a great depth piece grab. I know we haven't been talking about the Dodgers a lot this season. Um, you know, a lot of guys have left that team. Trey Turner, Tyler Anderson, Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, uh, Joey Gallo, our guy. Um, that yeah, I I I love that they brought in Miggy Rowe. I I think you know we we wondered if they were going to bring in one of the big shortstops. None of that really happened. You have one of the best insurance policies uh, you could probably have at the shortstop position. The Dodgers are also shopping at Norton's Rack. I mean, we understand the, typically you see them on Rodeo, uh, mm. but this off season they were trying to stay under that uh, next level, the tax threshold, but with. Miggy, it's going to go over, so maybe they'll pair down a different uh, person on their roster. Yes, James. That's what originally a lot of people said, but I was digging into that because there's no way you go over for Miggy Rowe. I love Miggy, but there's no way that that is the move. And then they said, yes, according to sources, they were over beforehand, and I think that means the Bauer suspension, non-suspension, put them over. Uh, So, but but also, they still can get under by the time the season ends. So they yes. can still move pieces then and get money down halfway through. And that's kind of super interesting to me if they are trying. Because if they don't, then they're going to get the 50% of the tax, uh, get, get taxed on 50% on whatever the surplus is, which they yes. want to avoid. But yeah, I... I was confused by that because I was like, it went up. this is the move that got them over? Didn't really make sense. I forgot that they can get down after halfway through. It's so whatever maybe... like the total money paid out is by the end of the year. Yeah. So that's like an interesting storyline, especially when it comes to deadline and stuff. Like, are they not going to take on any players because now they're slightly over? They have to just – are they once over? Do they care about it? Or are they – all right, we're getting taxed 50%, 50% on the dollar. Do we – 
just not go over by that much? Like, what are the how are the Dodgers going to handle this? No one seems to know because everyone thought they were like going to be under before the season started, and they're not. And did the Bauer news change course of action? It, it's been an interesting off season for the Dodgers. Obviously, the Bauer news is is they had to wait for that to come down. They made the decision. He's now a free agent. Uh, but the guys they've picked up so far in this offseason, J.D. Martinez, obviously Miguel Rojas. I keep saying obviously. I'll stop doing that. Jason Hayward, Noah Syndergaard. Five years ago, if they made these moves, we'd be like celebrating the Dodgers are all in. Uh, but they already have their core. These guys are debt pieces. And I like it, man. I like when you bring in veterans. So a team like this, it makes sense to me. Go get those veteran guys. See what you can get out of Noah Syndergaard. You know, make, we know what Miggy Rojas is going to give you. Jason Hayward, I, w- I want to see if they can, you know, get something out of him too. Uh, but these guys need to be role players there, and I think that's going to help. Wonder if uh, if they if they scouted the the Bay Area, the Giants, and they were like that year the Giants went nuts. The Dodgers sat down and they were like, "What the hell was that?" And they're like, "Okay, if we bring in some vets, we some tap vets. into them." Give him a couple more rest days. You can actually squeeze a little more pulp out of that orange. Uh, yeah, Trev, we might need you. You're our boots in L.A. We might need you to find the scoop because, yeah, if if they're going to go over, they're going to go over. If, if they're going to try to get under, I mean, you know, this is the Dodgers and they're supposed to be competing for the World Series. So, like, I, you're looking at these names and there's no one that you trade. And then, like Jimmy said, with Miggy Rowe, if you're going to go over with Miggy Rowe, like, you know, would they have signed J.D. Martinez? Would they have signed Syndergaard? So something's amiss, uh, and we need you to get in there, man. I'll be there. I think this year Chris and I are going to be at a lot more Dodger games. Possible head down to, you know, Anaheim and see the Angels, but we'll have the scoop because Miggy will be there, man. Miggy's our guy. Did either of your Twitters update to this for you timeline instead of following timeline? It's all awesome. both. Saw a bunch of tweets saying, man, none of these tweets are for me. I just watched a guy get his hand bit off. Like, his hand's off. I don't want to watch that. I was so upset. I was going to find out whoever reached. I was going to find out whoever retweeted it onto my timeline and unfollow them. I think you're having a different issue. All you got to do is touch at the top of the screen. You can go back to I know. I figured it out. I was like, this blows. None of these things. It was just all fights. I don't. I I was. Well. I went into the mix to try to like gain the system and change my like list order. And the, exactly. and it like says you can't change the for you and following. You can add any other lists you want and put those in any order, but those two will be one and two, no matter Man, what. Man, talk and about an app tough. that has never, they have never understood what they are. What idiots. What, um, okay. <laughs> what was the account that it's got the hand eaten? It's like a fish bites this guy's hand off. I don't know. And then all it was was street fights. It was this account called like Fight Heaven. So I muted the account. <laughs> I don't like watching street brawls. Like wow. I'm pretty like out on it. I, from what I've heard, that you, that's what you love. That's all you do is watch street brawls. They notice you have like, like I thought like if the fish bites the guy's hand and then he gets out of it, that's cool. But his hand was like a bloody mess. I mean, was it one of those fish where they fish with their forearms and they try to, like, get the fish to bite their forearm? That's called I noodling. I didn't catch it. No, it wasn't that. That wasn't that. That's how you catch the um, catfish. catfish, right? No. No, he was on a dock. The fish jumped up at his hand. I just watched a kid get knocked out. Let's, are the, are that's, the dodge? That's all oh, yeah, my that's thing weird. was, was people in the street getting knocked out. Like, my entire For You page is just stuff I don't want to see. Twitter, the Dodgers are going to get knocked out by the Padres this year. That's what I want to know. Probably not. Like, we have given the Dodgers so much credit over the last, how many years have we been doing the show? Four years. I don't know if that's right or not. And we never question them. We never question the Dodgers because they're good and they win. And like they're the Dodgers. So we just say, yeah, that makes sense. Are we at the point now where we're questioning some of these moves? Are we are we at the point where we're questioning like this roster and and what they have, or is this me being off season? No, trip, you probably to questioned. Something out? You probably questioned Heaney and um, Tyler Anderson. Tyler Anderson last year, and they were both like great, and then they were so good. The Dodgers said, "Don't care if you leave. We'll just do that to the next guy." 
Okay, so you're still all in. You're still buying in on the Dodgers system and, and the roster, and if they're going to win the NL West, and they're better than the Padres. Mm. You're still on that? Yes, yes. I, I would not bet against them, but I am interested to see how they do it this year. Because I still believe like they, their specialty is depth and handling injuries and winning more games than anyone else in a 162-game season. Now they're not. Special, their specialty is not having the most compact, best of the best team for the playoffs, like the Astros have proven to do. But it's it's their 162 game season. They know how to win more games than anyone else. So I'm interested to see how they do it. But I'm not going to bet against them. Like I, I think they'll win the division. The the high level pitching, Kershaw, Urias, Gonsolin. I mean, ERA is under two three. Uh, and then they still got six in the lineup that that can put together a season. So they're they're going to win a hundred games. We're going to their depth is going to be tested for the first. I'm mean, not for the first time. Their depth has been tested over the years. They've just been able to handle. You went oh. robot. You went robot, and then you evaporated. I'm back now. I don't know what's going on, guys. No, okay. Uh, I was saying, <laughs> you know, we. We know they've always had depth. And that, like you said, James, that's been especially. Thanks for the Z's. Um, this year, I think they're going to have to dip down. Where Before, they've had to just you know use their 26-man roster. Now, I think they're going to have to dip down and get some of these dudes from AAA, some of these pitchers, whether it's a Bobby Miller, whether it's a Gavin Stone. Like they're going to have to dip down and use these guys in the rotation. And I think that's, for me, the reason why I'm like, well, let's see how this goes. I, I I'm not as sure of the Dodgers as I have been in, in these years past because I feel like they're going to be a little bit more reliant on unproven guys. And that just has not been the case. Yeah, so but... They've been able to bring guys up, and it seems like typically they bring guys up and they're just really good players. So I believe in their player development. Um, I think we're going to see have to see more of it this year than ever do, do you remember their spring training pitchers last spring training? There was like three names yeah. and everyone was like, who's this guy? And he never even cracked the MLB team, I feel like. We saw Bobby Miller throw against the Angels preseason. And that was when we were like, oh, this guy is clearly doesn't surprise us. The Dodgers have another guy that can come and throw like this. There was another guy, too. Uh, yeah. It wasn't Bobby Miller. I forget who it was. If I see his name. Is Stone? Gavin Stone? No, but his brother was at the warehouse recently. Going to come out in two weeks, I think, that video. That's, that's right. It wasn't Gavin Stone. It was Michael Grove. He, I saw him pitch in spring training, and he was absolutely uh, yeah. nasty. Michael Grove, yeah. Hey, they got some cool names, like Gavin Stone, Michael Grove, Andre Jackson, Landon Knack with a K. Okay. Kyle Hurt. More of a Yancy Almonte guy myself. Mm. Jerming Rosario, Peter Marlin. That's so all true. I got. So I mean, true. there's some other stuff on the list here to talk about, but I don't, I'm good on it. Let's see. You. You, get, you guys have a lot of to say on it. Always I think we're going to start doing some drafts, some uh, prop bets. I was telling someone at Jake's bachelor party that Jake hit his plus 3,000 two years ago, and I hit my plus 3,000 last year. So and he was very impressed with us. I forget who Trev? I was telling that to. I probably would have hated that guy. Okay. I think it was Sheedy. Oh, I like that guy. Yeah. Great. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Farewell. Oh, stretching like that looks like it feels so good. Jake sucks.